In this lesson, we are going to learn how to complete an income tax form. So the first thing I have to show you is a T4. A T4 is a document that your employer will send you prior to February 28th of the year following when you need to file your income tax. So for example, this is the year 2010. So your employer would need to send you that statement prior to February 28th, 2011. On here it shows your employer's name, the Cypress Park Resort Inn in Maple Creek. It also shows on line 14 your employment income. So you earned $4,300 working at the resort. You worked in the province of Saskatchewan and you are Canada pension exempt because you are not yet 18 years of age. Your employer deducted $100.31 from your paychecks over the course of the year and $424.86 worth of income tax was deducted during the course of that year. It also indicates your name, your address, city and postal code. So to go over the problem that I'm going to create with you, you are a 16 year old high school student working part time during the summer at the Cypress Park Resort Inn in the beautiful Cypress Hills. You've been given the following T4 showing your earnings and deductions for 2010. You are exempt from paying into CPP because you are not 18 years of age yet. You receive $200 in tips during your time at the resort, which you must claim on your income tax. Complete the income tax forms necessary to file your return on April 15, 2011. The first document that we need to create is the T1 General. On the T1 General, to begin with, we need to put in our personal information. So we need to put our first name and initial, our last name, our mailing address, our social insurance number, and because this is a number that you don't want to give out, we're, for all of our problems, going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Enter your date of birth, 1995-0404, your language that you would prefer them to correspond with you in, and your marital status being the single high school student. Information about your residence on the left hand side here asks where you lived on December 31st, 2010, and we lived in Saskatchewan. The next part talks about Elections Canada and asks if we are a Canadian citizen. And once again, we are going to assume that everyone is a Canadian citizen. As a Canadian citizen, do you authorize Canada Revenue Agency to give your name, address, date of birth for the National Register of Electors? Yes, you do. The last part of the first page is talking about the goods and services tax credit. Okay, because you are 16 years of age, you are not eligible to apply for the GST credit. Okay, you must be 16 or 19 years of age prior to 2010. Okay, so that's page one. Page two of our income tax form begins with asking whether or not we have have or hold form property that is more than 100,000 Canadian. We would likely all like to say yes. However, I'm assuming because we're 16 years old and we're a high school student, we probably don't. So you're going to have to put an X in the no column. The rest of this page will show the total income. So we have to show all of the income, so what we earned over the course of the year. If you look back at that T4, it shows that we made $4,300 and 
we also had $200 in tips, which we must also record as other employment income. Okay, so those are our only two sources of income. So we're going to continue down to the bottom of the page and we're going to add our totals. So our total income is $4,500. Okay, this number will get carried on to page three of our um, income tax return document and we have no other income or ways that we can lower our income at this point. And so our net income before adjustments will remain at $4,500. Our net income will remain at $4,500, $4,500, sorry, and our taxable income stays at $4,500. Okay, the next step, and it says in big bold letters, is our, we need to calculate our federal tax and our provincial tax. So we're now going to skip away from the T1 general and go to our federal tax. So at this point you must now figure out your federal income tax payable. There is a basic personal amount. Okay, everybody gets to claim that amount. The other thing that a high school student showed on our T4 was that $100.31 was deducted from our checks over the course of 2010 and because we worked, we can claim $1,051. So our total tax credits are $11,533.31. And we can multiply this amount by 15% like it asks us to. And so our total non-refundable tax credits is $1,730. Moving on to page two, it asks us our taxable income, $4,500. Then we have to choose the appropriate column, one, two, three, or four. And because we only made $4,500, we're gonna use column one. We're gonna do the calculations, multiply by 15%. And so our amount that we calculate there is $675. To figure out our federal tax that we need to pay, we're going to take the amount from above the 675 and put it on line 37, line 404, and line 39. Enter your total federal non-refundable tax credits from line 28 of the previous page. That was the $1,730. And we're now going to subtract the two amounts, 675 minus $1,730. And so our basic federal tax is zero. Our federal tax is zero. So we need to keep putting these zeros down here. Okay, and so our net federal tax is zero. And it asks us to enter this amount on line 420 of your return. So you're going to go back to your return and you're gonna write that on line 420. Just gonna show you where I have that right here actually is where that's gonna go. All right, so the next step is to figure out our Saskatchewan tax credits, okay? So once again, we're gonna fill out that front page. Everybody gets to claim the basic personal amount. Notice it's different for a provincial than it is for federal. And we also get to claim an in employment insurance, okay? That's how much they deducted off our check for employment insurance. Those are the only two things provincially that we can claim. Okay, add up your total, carry it over to line 26, multiply by 11%, and you get $1,479.31. And that number is carried down to line 32. On the next page, just like in the federal, we need to um, 
put in our taxable income, which was $4,500. Choose column one, two, or three again. Okay, and once, once again, we made less than 40,000, so we're gonna choose column one. We're gonna put in our $4,500, multiply by 11%, so our Saskatchewan tax on taxable income is going to be $495. Notice how I've put those in the blank on line 41. Okay, and we don't have any other things, so we're just gonna put 495 down to line 45. Enter your Saskatchewan non-refundable tax credits from line 32, which was from the previous page, so $1,479.31 gets carried down and moved across to line 50. When we subtract these two numbers, once again we get zero, so we're not going to have to pay any Saskatchewan tax, but notice how I've continued putting zeros down to the end of the page. And we continue on, there's three pages to the Saskatchewan tax form we're going to put zeros all the way down to line 77 where it says Saskatchewan tax. Then we're going to go back to our T1 general. We're gonna put in our provincial tax of zero. So the total amount that we have to pay in taxes to the federal government is zero. The income tax that was deducted from our check was 424.86, and you can see that from the T4. We have no other things that um, we can get back from the federal government, so we add it up, 424.86, move it across, and then we have to subtract zero minus 424.86 gives us a negative $424.86. And if you notice here, it says if the result is negative, you have a refund. If the number is positive, you have a balance owing. So because we have a negative, I'm going to take that number and put it in the refund column. Okay, and then we need to fill out the remainder. The last step that you need to do is to fill out your name, your telephone number, and the date. And in the instructions, it told you to fill it out as of April 15th, 2011. So I hope that helps you when you need to continue on and do your practice assignment. Good luck.